this video, we will discuss bit strings. Bit is short for binary digit. So a bit string is a string of binary digits. Now the binary digits are simply the numbers zero and one. So here are some examples of bit strings. We can have 1001, it's a string of binary digits. Here's another one, zero. Here's another one, 1111. One, one. And then we'll do one more. One zero one zero one zero one zero one zero is a binary is a bit string. Excuse me. The number of bits, the number of zeros and ones in the string is the length of the string. The strings here have lengths four, one, four and ten, respectively. We also can ask how many of the bits are ones. The number of ones in a bit string is the weight of the string. Let's review some notation here with bit strings. I actually have something right here for that. All right, so here are some things about bit strings. An n bit string is a bit string of length n. That is, it is a string containing n symbols, each of which is a, each of which is a bit either zero or one. The weight of a bit string is the number of ones in it. BN, we're going to call it BN, is the set of all n bit strings. BNK is the set of all n bit strings of weight k. So for example, the elements of the set B, let's do B3, 2 are, let's see here. So these are, this, this is a set of all three bit strings of weight two. So these are zero one one, uh, zero, uh, one zero one, and I think the last one's one one zero. Those are the only strings containing three bits where exactly two of them are ones. Now here's the counting questions. How many bit strings have length five? How many of those have weight three? In other words, we are asking for the cardinalities of B5 and B5, three. To find the number of five bit strings, it's pretty straightforward. We have five bits, and each can either be a zero or a one. So there are two choices for the first bit, two choices for the second bit, and so on. By the multiplicative principle, there are two times two times two times two times two, which is 32 such strings. So this number is 32. Okay, so finding the number of five bit strings of weight three is harder. Think about how such a string could start. The first bit must be either a zero or a one. In the first case, the string starts with a zero. We must then decide on four more bits. To have a total of three ones, among those four remaining bits, there must be three ones. To count all these strings, we must include all four bit strings of weight three. So in this, so let's go through this uh, in more detail here. Let me, let me pull up some more room. So if we're looking at B53, so there uh, we have a five bit here. And there are two scenarios for our for these five bits. We can start with a one or we can start with a zero. In the case we start with a zero, then we must here have a four bit string of weight three, where in this scenario, we would have a four bit string of weight two. So this here, the, the number of 
options we have here is the size of B, where it's a four bit and the weight is still three. Whereas here, we already used one for our weight. And so this would be the size of all, hold on, I need to move back. Sometimes it does this. And it's zooming out, let's zoom back in. There we go. All right, so, sorry about that distraction. So this is the size of B, uh, it's a four bit. And now we only wanna have a weight two. And so there are two scenarios for um, a five bit of weight three, one that starts with a one or one that starts with a zero. And so if we wanna count the number of five bit strings, five bits where um, they have a weight three, then we could just add the, the cardinality of these two sets. So um, that means that B53 is just the size of B4, uh, two plus the size of B4, three. Now this is an example of what's called a recurrence relation. We represented one instance of our counting problem in terms of two simpler instances of the problem. Now if only we knew the cardinalities of B42 and B43. Well, repeating the same reasoning, let's do some math here. In fact, using the exact same reasoning, we can find these numbers pretty easily as well and develop a recurrence relation for those. Well, the size of B42 is just the size of B31 plus the size of B32. And B43 is just the size of B32 plus the size of B33. Now we can keep going down, but this should be good enough. Both B31 and B32 here contain three bit strings. We must pick one of the three bits to be a one, there are three ways to do that. Or one of the three bits to be a zero. There are three ways to do that. So this is just three plus three. Also, B33 contains just one string, which is one, one, one. So this right here is one. B33 is one. Thus, B42 is six and B43 is four. Since we know what B33 is, which we said was one, and B32 we said up here is three. So three plus one is four, which means that B53 is just six plus four, which is 10. But wait. 32 and 10 were the answers to the counting questions about subsets from the last video. Is that a coincidence? Not at all. Each bit string can be thought of as a code for a subset. Let me explain. I'm gonna uh, make some room for myself here. To represent the subsets of the set A, which we're gonna define as one, two, three, four, five. Sometimes it does this. I don't know why it does this, but I need to bring it back down. There we go. All right, so we're gonna represent the subsets of this set using a five bit string. 
one bit for each element of A. Each bit in the string is a zero if its, corres if its corresponding element of A is not in the subset, and a one if the element of A is in the subset. Remember, deciding the subset amounted to a sequence of five yes or no votes for elements for the elements of A. Instead of yes, we put a one. Instead of no, we put a zero. For example, the bit string one one zero zero one represents the subset one two five. Since the first, second, and fifth bits are ones, the subset three five can be coded by the string zero zero one zero one. What we really have here is a bijection from the power set of A to B5. Now for a subset to contain exactly three elements, the corresponding bit string must contain exactly three ones. In other words, the weight must be three. Thus, counting the number of three element subsets of A is the same as counting the number of five bit strings of weight three. So you can see how these things, bit strings and subsets, have everything to do with each other. They're very, very analogous in how they work. Anyways, thanks everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.